there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your settings. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to the Star Power Podcast on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss Stargirl on the CW channel. I'm Cosmic Staff Dave. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. And we have a special guest joining us as Steve has gotten lost in the Shadow Realm. Well, that or trying to pack for his new home. It could be either one. Please welcome all the way from the nerd element, Kim! Hi, guys! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's been so long since you've been over in the, the Fangirl Zone, so thanks for joining us today. Yes, I'm excited. And like I said, we're talking about Stargirl, so you should get a kick out of Cosmic Staff Dave here because... <laughs> He unfortunately will have to do boomer talk kind of all by himself, but you got three <laughs> different generations on right now. So let's see nice. how this goes. out. That's okay. I'm very immature. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hey, okay. Today's episode, we'll be discussing episode seven of season two of Star Girl Summer School. So what did everyone think? Sean, you want to kick it off? All right. Yeah, let's go with our initial reactions, which I liked it, but I'm confused, which we'll get to when we get into the recap. Oh, okay. I'm not sure exactly which way they're steering us. Okay. We'll talk about it when we're in the groove, but it's like, wait a second, because I know nothing about these comics. Uh, okay. Kim, what did you think? What was your initial reaction for the show? About the same. About the same. I'm not exactly sure. I, I mean, I, I think I'm confused on the same part that you are. And I thought it was it was actually very kind of, it's kind of sad, actually. So Very sad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I agree. agree with you 100% there. Dave, yeah. what did you think? <laughs> well, I know we're not rating. But if we were rating this episode, I would give it five out of five red wedding competitors. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how bummed I was. Good grief. I mean, she was fantastic. Yvette, fantastic. When she cried, I, I believed it. And when she got down, I believed it. But man, that was depressing. It's a good yeah. thing to say lower decks for afterwards. <laughs> yeah. That's like my palate cleanser for the week. I've been telling them, Kim. So like the lower decks come finally happy because some of these have been really rough. These shows lately. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, summer school would suck normally anyway, if you have to go. But come on, you don't need to have this much suckage in <laughs> one thing. Oh, poor Yolanda. God. So episode <laughs> seven, summer school, chapter seven. When the guilt over brainwaves death becomes too much to handle, Yolanda is forced to make a heartbreaking decision all right regrets this episode greatly focuses on yolanda and her regrets with what happened Bray wave and henry we open with her confessing to a priest wondering if the devil is truly real and if she kills something truly evil can she ever be forgiven that's a good question that was a little rough just seeing <laughs> that being asked it's like oh wow is this gonna get really deep all of a sudden or is the priest actually like eclipso like i had all things <laughs> going through my head I'm like oh the priest is gonna come through it's eclipso it's not even a priest or like i, I was a little surprised he decided to insert the catholic church i mean catholic church is all over evil but sometimes these shows won't touch organized religion with a 10-foot pole while i go there but they did and i was thinking oh, man it'd be cool if there was a jsa version like a god squad or something like that <laughs> Doesn't Dr. Oh. Fate kind of fit in that? Oh, no. No. Religion? Not really. Mysticism, Yolanda- baby. <laughs> Yolanda gets flashes of Henry and Brave Wave when they died. Painful flashes. At this point, I was thinking, it's not a priest you should be talking to. You have some PTSD. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, when she kept grabbing her head, that's where some of the confusion started. Like I said, I didn't know if it could be Eclipso or, like, did fighting Brain Wave give her, like, an aneurysm? It's like, what is going on? Because she's physically grabbing her head so it's not just something that she's thinking about anymore last year at the end of last season we i think we had discussed how uh we wondered if brainwave actually did insert a brainwave into her head they can bring it back but i was talked out of that by uh the local comic book store manager he goes no 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 it's a clip so i'm like okay we'll see <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway yolanda is not feeling herself so maria takes her table however when she's talking to customer Joe, I had another name for him. Her, 
Her eye glows purple and she pours coffee on him, which she probably deserved. She didn't know what happened, so she's let go for the day. As the other stuff is cleaning off the table, Yolanda talks to a little boy, the cornfield kid, and oh she my brings God. up. All he needed is that bright, blondish white hair. Yeah. To make him just 100%. <laughs> and she brings him a, a lollipop. So oh, nice. She turns around for a second. When she looks back, the little boy is gone and across the street by himself. Uh oh. I was, yeah. I don't think she noticed that, but I'm like, uh oh. After her shift, Yolanda hears a voice telling her that he's there and she gets a headache. She tries to talk to Courtney, but she's busy with Cameron right across the street, so she does some walking. She could have totally gone over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Maybe she felt she was getting replaced or something. Oh, maybe because of everything going through her head anyway. Yeah. So she ends up at the church where she finds her mother talking with Father Thomas. That that really ticked me off. And I was like, Father oh Thomas, what, what are you doing? Too, because, like, don't okay, you have work? What was that, Kim? I was like, don't you have, like, are you supposed to not do that? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's the first thing I thought of. I was raised a Catholic. I'm like, whoa, you just broke a major rule. But then, of course, he says uh, that he didn't. Talk me off. mom is so not understanding for anything. Yeah. Last season, they were horrible people to her. It's like, geez, like none of our families are on the same page. They can't get it. Yeah. Yep. But I'm glad uh, Father Father Thomas tells, tells her that Yolanda needs love and support and not judgment. And just as she's about to apologize to her daughter, Yolanda sees someone walk out the door. He looks a little like Brainwave, and it is Brainwave. <laughs> so she races out the door after him. Ben, I, I tell you, I never thought I'd see these actors again on this show, but they found him. <laughs> Again, this just starts layering the confusion for me. Most definitely. Yeah, well, Eclipso makes you see things. Yeah, that's, what... yeah, that's, that's why I'm like, I don't know if it's actually Eclipso or Brainwave, which it is. Yeah, I, but as Pat, aside from the guy who works at the uh, <laughs> comic book shop who was convinced it's it's Eclipso, Pat always says it too. I think he's mentioned every episode that Eclipso makes you see things. Yeah, he has, which I think that's for us. So I was assuming that it was Eclipso, but, you know, this episode made you guess. Yeah, it was tough. I was like 50-50. Yeah, all the way through the end, I'm starting to wonder. So, I oh, I don't know. We'll have, but, we'll have to see what the book, bookmaker say in Vegas. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah it's like 50-50 odds, so that's not going to help me at all. No matter which horse I back, it's going to be wrong, is what I feel like. But we get to go back to school, and Yolanda dozes off in class. But we don't know that she had dozed off. Yeah. Because she had suddenly seen Henry right outside the classroom, which I was like, why is Henry there? Oh, my God, is Brainwave really there? And he's pretending to be Henry again? But we get that weird text send me a pic it's like oh my god first of all uh, creep. second when she sees him it's like uh oh so she leaves and nobody says anything i would think the teacher would at least have said i know where are you all pass yeah, yeah. Something. but she goes in the hall and starts following henry who is walking slowly but quite a bit ahead of her and as yolanda walks towards him she gets that pounding headache and we get that sound that i totally get that sound too if i get migraines it's like that piercing oh, oh, should die sound wow but she keeps going forward yeah it sucks if, if when they hit <laughs> she follows a trail of blood and a lot of blood maybe don't follow the blood i don't <laughs> and she finds an almost zombified Henry in the cafeteria. And he turns around and tells Yolanda that because she's never forgiven him, he's in a bad place. He's burning. And oh I was like, God. wait a second. Uh, I thought she did forgive him. Yeah, I can't remember, but I like the little cut across the throat still. And he does look like a zombie. Yeah. Kind of like, I don't know, pale purple. Do you I can't remember. If I, I can't was... remember. I thought that she had. I thought that she had. Yeah, because... I, thought she was, yeah. I thought it was pretty sincere, if I remember correctly. Yeah, because she got so angry. Like with yeah. Brainwave, what happened? Like what he did to his own son. So right. she was. Yeah, that's why I thought that was weird. So then again, confusion, thinking, oh god, it's Brainwave really back, and he's pretending to be Henry again. But as Yolanda says, no, I forgave you, and and it's fine. You can go on. He just gets mean and suddenly says, but my father will never forgive you. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, we're going into a horror movie for real. Yeah. She gets another headache, and Brainwave makes an appearance as he tells Yolanda that he's with her forever. Yeah, that's not creepy. Creeping on the high school kid. <laughs> Just said, by the way, send me a pic. <laughs> I know. Uh, when Tinder goes wrong. <laughs> anyway, um, Courtney wakes up Yolanda in class and everyone's looking at her because apparently she was yelling no. So she runs out of the, the classroom. Next thing we know, we see Courtney with her trying to comfort her and they both have their book bags. Okay, I guess class is over now. 
<laughs> Grabbed her stuff and followed her, I guess. Cut away. Yolanda tells her what's happening and how this must be her punishment. And Courtney tries to help her, but she's never had to make that choice. Yolanda is the only one of the team who had to make this choice. So Yolanda does not want to listen to Courtney, that's for sure. Plus, let me say, Courtney has not exactly been the best leader, I'm going to say, because she no. not listen and jump at things and doesn't go right most of the time. Yeah, I've always said Rick should be the leader, but as we're to find out, it didn't turn out that she way. Does talk to Yolanda and gets her to tell Beth and Rick what's going on so they can work mm. on all of this as a team. And I'm thinking, okay, this sounds good. But is this going to work out? Yeah, I, I feel like this is the part that started to get me a little irritated here. Because I was like, come on, guys. Now, the JSA get together and Yolanda's like, I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if I should bring them in. But with a little nod from Courtney and some encouragement, she admits to uh, Beth and Rick that she killed Brainwave. Now, of course, Rick is like, I would have done the same thing if I had the chance. And I actually expected that from Rick. Um, yeah. 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 Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And she did what she had to for the team. But of course, Beth was like, I'm not so sure. She just sat there quiet. And then she's like, I don't know, which clearly upset uh, Yolanda. Um, upset me. Yes, that's I'm what like, like, it is. I'm like, come on, geez. Beth. Come on. All you had to say was, yeah. you had a tough choice. You saved the team. Not get all judgy. It's like, yeah. hey, I'm sorry. You are the one that's going through some stuff with your parents right now. And you are the one who doesn't have any, like, kind of power, I guess. You're using basically a computer. You're a behind-the-scenes person, but don't be so judgy, is all I kept thinking. It's like, wow. I know, you yeah. think the first person to have some empathy there would be Beth, or at least mm -hmm. some sympathy. It's just least. like, I don't know. And, you know, this at this point, Yolanda's, like, irritated, and she just she tells her friends that she's, they're not capable of doing what she did, and who's going to have to kill Ellipso because none of them are going to be able to do it, which leaves it on her, that which is a lot hard. of pressure. Yeah. It really hearing that. I know it. She was so good. The actress was so good in this episode, but that was very difficult to hear. Yeah, and she doesn't want them to have the guilt to know they'll always, always be a killer in God's eye, and so she puts it on her, which so you, you actually see, like, this weight that is on her shoulder that I didn't even think about that. You know, I was, like, thinking about, okay, she's going through all this guilt because of what happened with Brainwave, but she has also, she also has this pressure that she knows some, like, Ocups is going to have to die because they've said it, and she feels like she's the one that's going to have to do it, and that's just really rough. Well, I think yeah. part of it, too, with her being, like, hardcore Catholic, mm -hmm. like, yeah. I was brought up Catholic too, Dave. So I, I yeah, me yeah, too. There's like a okay. lot of like basically Catholicism is like a lot of guilt. Like you know that she's so upset that she's trying to talk to the priest that she's trying to figure out if the devil's real because she of course is thinking Eclipso is the devil and now you know one of the Ten Commandments, <laughs> Thou shalt not kill, and she has already broken it once. Is she ever going to be able to? be forgiven for that. And I can see that just weighing on her. So it's not just, oh, I did what I had to do, or it was the heat of the moment. It's going to be something that's going to haunt her for a really long time. And I absolutely agree with you, Kim, that she has PTSD. I think we've talked about that before, right, Dave? Yeah, we have. Yep. And I don't know, like, the way this ended, it's like, is she going to be able to get past this? And we still have quite a few episodes, though. So I'm hoping she's able to bounce back and get some help or, I don't know, we need to bring in... I don't know what Dr. Fate does. Maybe he can help her with her guilt. So. Mm -hmm. I should have a tinfoil hat theory for that. I do have one, but not for that. Uh -oh. Well, uh-oh. <laughs> So what's Yolanda doing? She goes back to the church to confess to Father Thomas. And I'm thinking, Doubting Thomas? And she lets it all out, which was super convincing, too. And she started crying and she buried her face in her hand. I think it was that instance. Man, like, oh, God, she's good. But this is so sad. And while she's confessing, Brainwave appears and brings up the fact that Henry's death is because of her. Yolanda gets out of the room and comes face to face with Brainwave. I'm like, wow, they really did bring this dude back. I kept thinking he was actually there. I mean, the actor. Yes, I know. But I thought it, it's not just in her head. Like, oh, she right. was actually facing Oh, him. yeah, for sure. I'm, this is well, just adding to confusion. 
Yeah, at this point, I didn't know what to believe. Yeah. Well, when he when I saw him inside the confessional, I, I figured it was uh, some type of hallucination since we'd already seen one before with Henry. Anyway, he admits that he underestimated her, but she underestimated him too. Yolanda tries to run away, but Brainwave closes his door. Even now, she can't even escape anymore. So he'll be in control, and her body will be used, and Brainwave will live again through her, which is really strange yeah. and creepy too. When he explains this, I'm like, first of all, evil villain monologue, but okay. Yeah. The- that happened did he put something in her head so he's uh, technically not dead or again yeah. is this just guilt i that threw me the other way too i'm like oh is he there or not did they really stick a little something in her head at the end of last scene but as i as i mentioned earlier i, I was convinced that it's really eclipso and he's doing it see i'm starting to think that's why eclipso couldn't necessarily affect yolanda like since he's in his little physical form i would exactly. yeah. Yeah, something's nice. in her head blocking him. I think, though, thinking about it, though, the reason why we saw the kid, because we saw a kid around her in this episode, was to tell us that he's doing this. Yeah. I hope they explain it next week, because I'm so confused. So, anyway, there's the high pitch ringing, and Yolanda's mind is nearly exploding. Courtney shows up, but Brainwave gets to her, too. Yolanda suits up, <laughs> somehow, and claws Brainwave's neck, which turns into Henry. He tells her she's going to burn with him, and he's on fire. Man. Courtney puts the staff in the ground, and Yolanda is freaking out. She tells Yolanda it's going to be okay, but it's never going to be okay. Yolanda wants to be left alone, but Courtney can't do that. That's true. She can't leave anybody alone. So Yolanda wants to know why'd she do it? Why did she choose her to be in the JSH? She, she wasn't supposed to be Wildcat. And she had go through with that a little bit last year too. Yeah. Yeah. She was gonna yeah. She wasn't supposed to hurt anyone. Yolanda tells Courtney she's never putting that costume on again and she quits. Yolanda's going through a lot now more than ever. While she is quits the JSA and her job, her former team will always be there for her. Hmm. Yeah, except for Beth. Hopefully it's just a temporary setback because the team needs Wildcat, but Yolanda's mental health is definitely a top priority. Of course, as it would explain to me, too, this is what Eclipse will do. And Pat always said this, too, that he's going to try and break everyone up, turn everyone against each other. Kind of Voldemort-ish. Yeah. My uh, tinfoil hat theory is when she returned to the church and I looked at the church sign and it said St. George. In English mythology, St. George slew the dragon. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I get it. Maybe it's a little subtle hint that dragon is Eclipso. And so who's St. George? And that would be the Shining Knight. So maybe the Shining Knight's going to return to the, the show. And that would mean three would return to the show as far as the original. Because we know the original Starman's out there, even though he seems to be from another Earth. And we know Dr. Midnight is out there. So maybe the Shining Knight will return to too, what do you think? That's oh. an interesting theory. I wondered why they kind of focused on the church name. Yeah, I'm going to look for a little subtle thing as we continue to see if the, you know, maybe there'll be a green light deep in the background or something silly like that as a hint or a green lantern or something. We'll see. Those kids need to come back soon, too. And we need to know what's going on with Johnny Thunder. Or I know. Like, it's so strange. It's like one and done. Yeah. They have come a lot on. of moving parts. They do. They have to put this puzzle together so we at least see some more. I will say, though, when they show her, like, kill Brainwave again in this and it turned into Henry, mm. I was nervous it was going to flash when Courtney kind of woke her up with the staff that it was going to be the priest. Oh. Yes, I was, too. I was like, oh, Lord. Oh, no, don't do this. That's all I kept thinking. It's like, she yeah. can't handle hurting somebody else. Please don't do this. Did the staff go out again when she put it down? It, looked, it seemed like it went dark. Like it came back for a little bit, then it went dark. Or was that just me? I thought it just meant that she was woke. She's like woken up now. You know what I mean? Like she put her hand on it and it was glowing. Like it was trying to help her. And then it mm. went dark when she was back. That's what I took from it. But I, I, I could be wrong. Yeah, we've I'm seen it dance that. around her uh, when it's when she's not holding. We've seen it dance around the room and stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure uh, out how nobody sees her walking down the street with this freaking <laughs> or flying like bewitched or some crap. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. It's been days apparently since Cindy and Isaac were killed, and all the while the staff is starting to get better, but it's still a little weak. Which made me wonder how the heck she had it out to save Yolanda, but maybe it was juiced up enough. <laughs> Running down the street with it. Pat mentions that there's nothing in the news, but Courtney brings up that he could have left Blue Valley. And I love Pat's like, no, the weather still sucks here, so I don't think yeah. he's left. <laughs> yeah. 
He is no longer in the Black Diamond, so what does Blue Valley mean to someone or something like Eclipso? Whatever the reason, Pat knows it's not good. I really thought we were going to get whatever they're holding back at this point, but nope. not yet. Beth's having a hard time trying to track Eclipso, and she also hasn't had any good luck trying to get a hold of Midnighter again. Well, mm. Pat is training the newest GSA member, Mike, by mostly fixing Stripe, which that I found <laughs> amusing. The only were amusing part of the show. Nod? I, I need you guys to tell me that Pat might have some power, like he might be a little stronger. S- super strong. I don't know. He's never showed before. Why build a robot? Or do you think it's just that Mike? He, they're trying to show how behind he's got nothing. He's, he's got nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because, like, when he hands him the bucket of lug nuts with, like, one hand, and Mike's like, whoop, you know, dropping it, and basically, like, putting his whole body weight on the wrench. That's why I'm like, I didn't know if they're trying to hint that Pat might have some strength. I don't know. Like, I he, I haven't <laughs> seen it before, so I, I just thought it was like, okay, Mike's a little kid, you know? And they're trying to keep him, make him look like a little kid, but he's obviously growing in real life. So oh, trying to show that he's still little, mm-hmm. basically. I guess so. Little. Yeah. Maybe Pat's trying to show him that, kid, you can't even tighten this righty tighty lefty loosey and you want to go out and fight villains? I can't even have to do that. I'll say that all the time when I do <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to do something like, wait, try, try, oh yeah, okay, okay, got it. Yeah, okay, that's going to be with me forever. How does Mike not know that? Everybody in the world knows that, come on. Well, at least fixing Stripe is something to keep them occupied while Eclipso's on the loose. However, Pat steps outside to get some parts from Zeke, and Mike happens to spot something glowing and purple on the table. Why is the black diamond there in pieces? Oh my god, I couldn't believe that. I'm like, who leaves that there? Right, just in a little cloth. <laughs> yeah, I know, secret cloth. Is that what it is? I don't know. And then he starts playing with them, because why not? You didn't just Ugh. see what happened when he threw a piece at Cindy, and she disappeared into the sub-basement, the Shadow Realm, whatever. Yeah. But as he's playing with them, he notices a leech, and then there's a whole bunch of them, and they're covering his arms and his neck, and I was like, Whoa. I don't know. <laughs> it was gross to me. <laughs> I know it wasn't real, but it was gross. Did you ever see yeah. the movie The uh, African Queen? Boomer Talk. Uh, <laughs> it's Humphrey Bogart. At one point, they're in there, but I don't remember. Yeah, it is so swampy that he has to get out of the ship and he's pulling it through with a rope. And he finally gets to the other side of the swampy parts and he's on the ship and he's covered with leeches. Uh, covered. Oh, uh, super gross. Ugh. <laughs> I lost my brain now. It's going to be stuck in there. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought at this point, Mike, why do you stop? Just stop. Stop, Mike. I was scared his eye was going to glow purple. Yeah. yeah. But he's like knocking all the pieces off and Pat comes to his rescue and kind of like wakes him up. Thankfully, there were not real leeches. And he tells them, don't touch those. And he just kind of folds it back up. Can you yeah. maybe put it away? I don't know. Yeah, there should be a secret place in the robot. A little safe. But yeah, still, why does Pat have them who picked them up what does this mean i don't know maybe it's something to do with the secret whatever the secret is but uh, they wouldn't have any idea that eclipso would be there so i don't know maybe you save so eclipso can go back into the diamond is there a way of putting the, the diamond back together that's what i'm wondering and he does say the diamond was eclipso's only weakness before so he's hoping it still is but Still, it's like, I don't know. I think it's going to be a whole lot of bad when the secret comes out and they should have just come clean already. Wait, when did they pick it up? They picked it off screen. That's all yeah, off screen. Yeah. Off screen. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you got to give them some leeway with some of this because it's like, that doesn't make any sense. But not like all at the American Dream. Barbara, the American at American Dream. That's uh, I. Why did I not know that the place was named American Dream? Or maybe I just maybe I just forgot. I don't know. Well, Barbara looks at Jordan's portrait and he, she hears this eerie, echoing voice say "Emily," but no one's around. And the voice gets louder, and then kind of shade-like smoke appears at the top of the ceiling, and black liquid falls from the ceiling. And she goes to touch it. And I'm like, "Don't touch that!" And she does anyway. She went uh, nice in a horror movie. I know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like. Don't do so. What is going on? We do not know. It was really quick, just like that. Uh, yeah. I, Tom at Wonderland Comics had a theory about that. Sorry to interrupt you. He thinks that the voice was really trying to say Emola, because in the comics, Emola was the daughter with finger quotes of the shade. And uh, remember, the theory is that, uh, well, was it my theory? That Barbara is really the long lost, oh, it was Tom's theories too, long lost daughter of the shade. And that's why he has <laughs> looking been looking out for her and remind, she reminds him of something like, I guess it could be this Emola that's from the comics. 
Ooh. Well, I said to him, well, it did say Emily in the closed captions. Oh, it did? Still, that's pretty close. We'll see. Well, apparently the shade's in my house because somebody just shut the door <laughs> by itself. Now I'm freaked out. Great. Look at oh the found me. Look at the ceiling. <laughs> uh, so Barbara doesn't know what she saw. Is the shade who's injured stuck in the shadow realm like Dr. Midnight? <laughs> I forgot about Dr. Midnight for a second. There are so many moving parts like that we just see pieces of that they need to get back to. No, that was uh, our theory from last week. Well, one of my theories anyway. It gets sucked back there. Okay, creepy boy Damien, first seen by, <laughs> by Yolanda at the diner. Uh, he is skulking around. He is in front of Beth's house the final minutes of the episode. Okay, see, this is the thing that I, I so I it looked like from the previews, the next episode is going to be about Rick, but I feel like because we saw Damien, I'm just going to call him Damien, <laughs> in front of the diner for Yolanda in this episode was about her head being messed with that Beth is next person up. Yes. I think, he's, yeah, he's going to make her see, I don't know, her, either her parents splitting or, I don't know what, disowning her and <laughs> leaving her there. Or, or at least uh, Dr. Midnight and Dr. Midnight would be, you know, yelling at her saying, you don't deserve to, to follow me or something like that or follow in my shoes. I figured it was going to be the parent thing. Yeah. It's going to be like, no, you can have her. No, you can have her. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, wow. What? <laughs> it, it's going to like devastate her. Yeah. That's a good one. I mean, it's evil, but it's good. All right. <laughs> this was crazy. Final thoughts on the episode? Still a little depressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, was very, it was a very heavy episode. Um, and I really do hope Yolanda gets some help because she's not like she can go to a counselor and say, this is everything that's happening because they'd be like, yeah, I'm committing you. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. Gosh, this is just, this was rough. Like, so far, like, we've had some ups and downs with Stargirl, but this was a lot of psychological, like, pummeling, is what I'm going to say for us. So. Yeah. What if she'll be in the episode at all next week? Yeah, and her mom, again, I just want to say, when she picked yeah. up the call from Courtney, and she's like, it's your fault. It's like, maybe look in a mirror, okay? <laughs> Just throwing that out there, but I'm surprised she went back to the church. She was seen so taken aback at that uh, Father Thomas might have snitched on her, but she went back anyway. Well, you know how we feel. We'd love to hear your thoughts and know all of your questions for each and every episode of the season. <laughs> Nothing to bark about. Hot dog agrees. <laughs> <laughs> Our deadline for feedback is 6 p.m. Eastern every Friday during the season. You can send your feedback by audio or email to contact us at fangirlzone.com. Please review and rate us on iTunes and any other platform you use for your podcast with good ratings and reviews. It helps other fans of the show find us. Tell your friends. I hope you're enjoying our podcast. And don't forget to check out the other great Fangirl Zone podcasts. You know, stuff like the Mudhorn Clan cast, for example, if you're into... You know, Star Wars <laughs> stuff. So don't forget to go to www.fangirlzone.com. You can hit our contacts page and find all the ways to get a hold of us that way as well. Say hi to the pod dog who is just <laughs> into talking this week. <laughs> and again, I encourage everybody to send any boomer talk over to us so Steph <laughs> and Dave can address it. And come on, I want you guys to stump them with something you found that we didn't find. So for this episode of the Star Power Podcast, Kim the Chief. Uh, hi, I'm Kim. I'm Sean Fangirl S, and I don't know if my staff is ever going to glow again. <laughs> this is Cosmic Staff Dave, and you can count on me to keep wrenching.